After the Second World War, farming in Great Britain underwent massive changes. While yields rose fourfold, the impact on wildlife was catastrophic. This added to earlier damage inflicted since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. A recent study shows that today the UK has lost almost half of its natural biodiversity. It's lost more wildlife than almost any other country in the world. Many people are beginning to think something drastic must be done. The country's most intensely farmed region today is East Anglia. Here, three large estate owners, Hugh Summerleighton, Olly Burbeck and Argus Hardy, joined forces in 2020 to create a highly ambitious project, Wild East. Their plan is to hand back to nature, or rewild, a fifth of the total land in East Anglia, an area of 618,000 acres, three times the size of New York City, by 2070. Their challenge now is to get everyone with land involved. Yeah, the project is going well. It's just over a year old. We started last summer with a bit of a bang. But what we, where we've been really, uh, we've just reached uh, just over a thousand pledges. A lot of those are, are, you know, ordinary, as I say, people in their gardens. So they're small scale, but big in heart. And we've got just over a hundred farms and there are lots of sectors that we hadn't pre-thought of. Uh, a good example is Greater Anglia, the railway network. It's got a pre-existing network and quite a lot of land out here. At Summerleighton Station, on Lord Summerleighton's estate, gardening volunteer Sue Cox has been working out which plants are the best at attracting insect life along the platforms. Once you've got an idea of, of what's going on, your eyes start to open uh, to all the, the bees and the shield bugs, butterflies, caterpillars, hoverflies, day flying moths, everything else that is going on here. So the invertebrates, the insects and other invertebrates, are at the bottom of the food chain. So if you attend to that, you're feeding the rest of the food chain. No invertebrates, no lizards, no snakes, no birds, no, no predators, nothing. Schools in the region have also been doing their bit. Pupils and teachers have started cultivating vegetable gardens on their premises. There are scores of rewilding projects in the UK. What makes Wild East different is its effort to join up the rewilded areas to create biological corridors. The goal is to create a huge swathe of interconnected wild territories stretching across East Anglia. We don't want one big kind of reserve for wildlife surrounded by, uh, you know, no habitat or food at all, because then whatever lives in the, in the reserve area has nowhere to go, can't spread out, it becomes a, an island. Rob Raven says that if nature is to recover, farmers must also change the way they farm on the rest of their land with an eye toward ecological sustainability. He took us to his farm where he and his father have been carrying out regenerative farming for over a decade. So this is buckwheat, which is flowering yeah. now. It's very quick growing, but it will, it will die as soon as there's a frost. Mm -hmm. um, this is vetch, which is nitrogen fixing mm -hmm little legume which is very good at sort of crawling around and then suddenly planting companion crops alongside the cash crop he says um, increases really soil health yeah, a key feature of regenerative farming which is related to agroecology is that farmers use low-till methods they use lighter machinery to drill directly into the soil to seed instead of breaking up the soil structure and worm and root channels by plowing in this way, they reduce both soil compaction and soil carbon release to the atmosphere. But the key thing for us that we probably didn't appreciate when we started it is that when you don't disturb the soil at all, you've, you're planting your seeds in rows, but all the soil in between is left completely untouched. So, and then the weed seeds that are there don't tend to germinate as much because you haven't buried them with your cultivations and they're still on the surface with the sun and the rain and the, and the birds and the mice and the insects all trying to break them down and eat them. So we find that by reducing disturbance of the soil, we're reducing our needs for herbicides to get rid of the weeds in the first place. On his restored Massingham Heath, Ollie Burbeck has a dream to reintroduce the great busted bird, which became extinct in the UK in the mid-19th century. They're almost like, like a... Um, 
like a small ostrich, um, crested and rather peculiar looking, flightless. And they make an extraordinary clucking noise. The next project potentially is to bring back great bustards to Massingham Heath, which um, the la apparently, so folklore has it, the last great bustard was, was shot here on, on, on where we're standing. Wild East is in its infancy. Its success, or failure, will depend in large part on the policies that the UK government adopts now the country has left the European Union. What is remarkable is the new determination of key actors to think up schemes that until recently were regarded as unthinkable.